Hi everyone, and welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, the Z9's ordered, and these are now on their way to be traded in. Or they will be after I've used them this week. I've also ordered that lens. Yeah, you know the one, the Z7200 f2.8. Yes, I know what I said, but the Z9 deserves the best. And although I still think using an FTZ adapter is perfectly acceptable, unfortunately, I kind of need the highest percentage of in-focus shots that money can buy. That's what the customers expect. That's what they expect of me. Who am I to argue? And any, to, any excuse to get that lens anyway. <laughs> you know I liked it really. Anyway, the Z9 will become my little workhorse when it eventually arrives, whenever that may be. Who knows, because I've been doing a little survey. And here in the UK, we definitely have a mirrorless camera stock issue. I mean, take the Z70 to 200 2.8 that I've just been talking about, for instance. It's out of stock in a lot of the top online stores at the moment. And that's including Nikon UK, who say that its shipping date is mid-December. Ooh, Christmas present, anyone? A couple of other stores seem to have it on back order, as are the Z72 and the Z62. One store claims to have very limited stock. And the same with the Z72. Oh, ugh. okay. They did seem to have plenty, what this one, one, one store seemed to have plenty of the Z62 FTZ bundle, which is quite amusing because that one is out of stock from Nikon UK. But they do have the Z62 and the Z72 bodies in stock. Are you keeping up, guys? <laughs> but it's not just affecting Nikon. It seems to be affecting Sony and Canon as well, but maybe not so acutely. I don't know. It's very interesting. Do you know... The one place that seems to have no issue at all, I bet you can guess, yeah, Amazon. So let me know if you're experiencing something similar in your country, I'd be really, really interested to know. And if any of you have managed to get stuff really easily, let me know. I just find it really interesting. Anyway, following the Nikon Z9 launch last week, the thing I haven't really seen much talked about is its native ISO range. In fact, do you know I can't even remember it being mentioned in the launch video. And when something's not talked about, well, my, my alarm bells start to ring, I'm afraid. So let's go back to the Nikon USA launch with Mark Cruz to see what he actually said on the subject. How about ISO? The Z9's native minimum ISO is 64, allowing for broader dynamic range and accommodating for fast lenses like the Nikkor Z 50mm f1.2 S and the 58mm f0.5 Noct. And because the Nikon developed stacked CMOS sensors based on BSI architecture, the high ISO goes all the way up to 25,600 and expandable up to 102,400 ISO. So, we get a native range of 64 to 25,600. Okay, let me throw a comp few comparisons at you. The D5, D6 has 100 to 102,400. Okay, you say it's in DSLR. Well, I'll tell you what, how about the Z6, Z6 II then? 100 to 51,200. In fact, the Z9 is gonna have the same native range as the Z7 II, which to be honest, I find a little bit strange for a flagship camera, especially as it was touted for sports. Now, do you remember those videos uh, leading up to the, to the launch? And including in the launch, in fact, the long jumper, the runners, the motorbike, the racing cars, the tennis player. They all require high shutter speeds. In fact, from 1600 up to 4000, according to the, the video. Remember when we could see through the lens? And even in bright sunshine, they're using up to 3200 ISO. Now, for running dogs, I frequently touch shutter speeds of 3200 
And just in case a cloud covers that elusive UK sun, or I'm indoors, I need high ISO. And I'm not talking about an indoor school somewhere in Surrey. I'm talking about somewhere like Crufts, for instance, where I often use 8,000 ISO. And at Olympia, it's 4,000 and above. So, just to stir things up, <laughs> this will be popular, let's bring some of the opposition in. The Sony A7 IV, for instance, 100 to 51,200. The A1, 100 to 32,000. The new Canon R3 and the R6 both have a native range of 100 to 102,400. So am I worried about those lost few stops? Well, yes, a little, to be honest. But I tell you what, just to make myself feel better, I thought I'd take a look back at some of my older cameras and you know how fond of them I am. And I tell you what, you know what? My all time favorite, the D4S, was, wait for it, 100 to, yes, 25,600. And I can't remember having noise issues with that at all. In fact, the camera was known as the low light king of cameras. So whilst I wait for the Z9 to arrive at my door, whenever that may be, I'll be dreaming of a time when I can do a D5, Z9, Z6 II comparison. And yes, to be absolutely honest with you, I am keeping one D5 just in case. Don't get me wrong, I'm still excited for the Z9 and I'm really looking forward to trying it out. And as a matter of interest, if there's anything you want me to shoot with the Z9 when it arrives, let me know and I'll see if I can do it. Within reason, of course, guys, don't, don't push it. <laughs> I'm thinking birds, cars, stuff like that. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope I haven't caused you any regrets. I think the Z9 will be, as Rene put it, Nikon's F5 movement. And I think that's absolutely right. If you liked and enjoyed this video, or at the very least found it thought provoking, then please like it. And if you want to see my future exploits and musings, please click on the subscribe button. Now take care, and until next time, bye.